Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, crowdfunding. I don't think crowdfunding is as radically different as you know normal, uh, quote unquote normal, what comics has been in the market for for decades. Actually, let me abbreviate that. It shouldn't be different from how normal comics have been for decades. And this is a case where I don't think I, the, people sometimes describe crowdfunding as a separate a very different thing. And, but why? I mean, if you look at it, what, some of the things I hear about crowdfunding is like, well, crowdfunding allows you as the creator, as the, the publisher, in fact, the creator is the publisher, the owner of this thing. It allows you to talk directly to your customers. Um, why again? Somebody explain to me, why can't the traditional publishers talk directly to their customers? Shouldn't they be doing that anyway? What, why, why is, is crowdfunding unique? No. Crowdfunding is small enough because it's a personal entity doing it. It's a person that they, in order to get the message out, in order to do the marketing, um, you're seeing a person do basically a company's job in one. And, and granted, I know uh, a lot of crowdfunding campaigns, they use help and, you know, there's, uh, there's lots of different pieces to it, right? It's not just, uh, it's, it, it's, it's rarely, ju well, not rarely, but it, it doesn't have to be one person doing it all, setting it all up, do, running a crowdfund, fulfillment, and everything else. Um, but it is equivalent to a publisher, a company who is, you know, printing the comic, doing the marketing, getting the fulfillment out, all those different pieces. Uh, the difference is with crowdfunding, you do not have a giant company behind you and you're doing it yourself. You're, you're doing it as a small, either an individual or a small group of people. But all the things that are going on in crowdfunding, and this is a part that kind of irks me a little bit, and I'm hoping that most of the people in the video is like, I don't understand the problem, but I get asked a lot, tell us about the major differences between crowdfunding and uh, traditional publishing. And my, my biggest answer is there, there aren't differences or there shouldn't be differences. There are differences, but there doesn't need to be differences, I guess is the point. Um, in fact, it's actually somewhat striking if you look at a crowdfunded campaign and you look at some individual, whether it's Kickstarter, Indiegogo, wherever it happens to be, and they're out there and they're making videos for the book and they're making you know different tiered incentives and perks and they're, they're out there uh, hustling a little bit. They're going on shows to kind of promote the title and everything else. And all of those elements that are getting done are elements that you should see for, frankly, every title. And if you say to yourself, well, it's not feasible for like Marvel to do this. Well, how can Marvel do this for all of their titles? I mean, they're publishing 16 titles a week. Well, if that's the case, if that's your answer, then I think there's really only two conclusions. Either number one, yeah, you're damn right. Every single one of those 16 titles should have the same kind of thing behind it, should have the same momentum and energy behind it. Um, I mean, the reality is if you look at the backers for crowdfunding campaigns, now, you know, there have been big numbers put up on the board. People are like, look, this title made $100,000, $200,000, half a million dollars, whatever. There's been some great crowdfunding campaigns. But if you look at the at the actual people, the, the number of people that have supported these things, um, those numbers are very often, you know, when I say low, it's not low, but it's like if, 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 if you did a one-to-one -one equivalency, and you can't, different things, but if you did, if you decided to do apples to apples and you said, all right, the amount of unit sales sold of, say, you know, this Dan Slott uh, Amazing Spider-Man comic that sold 78,000 copies. Well, that's, that's astronomically larger if you say each one of those 78,000 copies went to a person. Now, that's not exactly how it went. Of course, those copies were ordered by retailers. Some went to the shelf. Some people bought two. Some were not sold at all. There's lots of things going on there. So when you look at a successful crowdfunding campaign, and there's many, many crowdfunding campaigns that have had, like, 1,500 backers, and it's a huge success. That's a 1,500 backers that raised $100,000. It's amazing. Well, that, that is success. You can't take that away from it. So, but, so, but if you were doing it, if you're saying, well, 1,500 people, individual backers versus 78,000 people buying Amazing Spider-Man, then obviously Amazing Spider-Man has more individual people. However... Um, you know, the price point's different. There's a lot of reasons why that's not a fair comparison, but the part that is valuable to note here is Marvel and DC, in particular the big two, but but Boom and Image falls into this as well. Um, they are trying to sell, you know, at least 20,000 copies of a book. Why 
at those numbers, and given the fact they've got backing of a corporation and all those all those pieces to it, why can't, why shouldn't they do the same level of marketing, customer engagement, um, in some cases, uh, you know, outreach that crowdfunding campaigns do? They should. They don't, but they should. And there's this weird thing that kind of happens with the bigger companies. And and by the way, there's lots of gotchas in what I'm saying right now, and that's fine. I'm kind of being a little bit dramatic to to prove a point. Um, or not dramatic, but I, I, you know, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, the point here is that a big publisher tends to market for their entire line. Like we are Marvel. This is an initiative. It's King in Black, and there's lots of titles that go on here, but King in Black is what we're marketing. But the reality is. Um, they're, they have the infrastructure, the staff, the backbone, the funding, in a lot of cases, to do the same level of one-to-one support for each title that a crowdfunding campaign does. They, they do have that mechanism. In fact, you could argue over time it would become easier, since these are ongoing monthly books, that you could set yourself a little structure, and then you could have a vehicle for how you're going to reach out and everything else. Why not? Why is it, for example, as just a, another way to do kind of one-to-one marketing, why is it that on day of release, that on you know Wednesday when new digital copies of the comics go out, why doesn't Marvel um, you know, get a little bit of art, structure a nice little tweet that has the cover, the synopsis, and a direct link right into Comixology one-click purchase that you could, you know, on your mobile phone as you're surfing through Twitter while in the grocery store line, click the button. And be taken immediately to a purchase page for that digital copy. Why is it that? You know, why shouldn't every comic have that done when when comics are released on Wednesday? Shouldn't they all have that level of easily shareable? Check out what's going on in X Men. Maybe a you know a, a early pencil draft version and click here to buy. Um, I got off track a little bit, but the point is, crowdfunding is actually not that different from publishing, or at least how publishing could be. It's a one-to-one relationship with the customer, but the publishers do have the infrastructure to do that and could do that. Granted, uh, you know, the actual creator reaching out to each individual fan, which doesn't, I mean, sometimes that happens, but you, you don't necessarily need to go to that level. But you absolutely can have a relationship that's title-specific. You, you could do that. In fact, it would be smart if you did that. You get a better sense of who your market is. Today, the publishers really only know their market through the lens of the comic retailer. They don't actually know completely who's buying their comic. They can do Twitter polls, but do they have demographics? Do they know, for example, if Avengers is, uh, you know, generally purchased between the ages of 28 to 36 or whatever it happens to be? Do they know, for example, that Spider-Gwen is read by more women than men or these kinds of, of stats? They don't really have a good way to do that, but they would if they actually ran their publishing houses more like crowdfunding campaigns do. Crowdfunding campaigns, at the end of the day, to me, it's just distribution. That's really all it's doing. It's allowing people who have a project to be able to go and uh, you know solicit and market that project, collect money, and then deliver it. There's a lot more complexity certainly there, but at a high level, that's what it is. And I think that this is a case where publishers should adopt more of that marketing approach, more of that one-to-one title approach. I, the, some of the best crowdfunding campaigns I've seen are ones that will say things like, if you like this comic and this comic and this genre and this artist, then here's something for you. And they, they basically state their case and they lay it out that way. That's a smart way to do it. And again, anyone can do that. The big publishers can do that. And I would argue easier than some individual with no marketing experience, although you can argue a lot of people a publisher also don't do have no marketing experience. But I, I just think that I, it, it's, it's, I, I saw these, these people commenting like, well, crowdfunding is vastly different from traditional comic publishing. And I'm like, but why? Is it really? The big differences are on the distribution model, the fulfillment, that it's more of an individual effort that you're going direct to consumer as opposed to to a comic shop that's going to sell to that consumer. But is there any real reason why the publishers can't have a more direct to consumer engagement model? They could. The tools are out there. I mean, as an experiment, I could start taking uh, titles that are out on digital, and I could create this one-click-to-buy link myself and just start putting it on Twitter. Here's something you can buy right there. I could do it tonight. Probably will do it tonight. 
why isn't this happening at the publisher level who arguably have a better reach? They've got the blue check mark. They've got all the, the marketing support. Why, why isn't it that simple? I, I am often amazed when I see publishers talking about digital releases. And they're like, go check our stuff out on Comixology. It's like, you could put a link. Why, why don't you put a link there? It's it's strange to me, especially at the the small level. I think I, I want to pick on Vault, but I don't. I, maybe it was Vault. And there's some like you could check out some of our comics on Comicsology. It's like you didn't provide a link. The best you can hope for is somebody's going to go put Comicsology into their browser, uh, go there on their own, and then hope you, you're hoping they remember to put Vault into the search box. But chances are they could get you know sniped by some. Uh, one of your competitors on the front page advertising a sale or some other comic. Like, what a weird way to, to promote your stuff. Um, I, I, I don't know. To me, there's more similarities to, to crowdfunding than differences. And I think the differences are self-inflicted differences. Now, I, again, there are lots of other factors here. But really, um, you know, if, if I'm running one of these publishers, big or small, I would go try and co-op that market. I would basically go and, and say, look at what they're doing that's working from a customer engagement marketing standpoint. Start doing it for my titles right now. Build up my own mailing list. Build up my own sub list. Let's see what, let's see what we can do. I think I could accomplish that pretty easily. And um, I, the big mystery is why, why don't people? Um, anyway, it's, it's, it's an interesting case. Like I said, lots of, lots of unique you know, aspects to crowdfunding for sure, um, particularly for the creator reduces their barrier to getting to market and allows them the ability, you know, without somebody in the way to kind of approve or deny what they're doing. That's creator owned, to be honest. But uh, um, yeah, in terms of the actual vehicle to get in comics out there, it doesn't have to be as different as it, as it comes across. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Let me know how wrong you think I am in the comments below. And thanks for listening.